Hello and welcome to the Electrician's Hangout. Uh, today's tutorial, we're going to get into uh, the four-way switch. The last tutorial we did together, we uh, took a look at wiring three-way switches. And uh, hopefully the tutorial was helpful and you guys got something out of it that was useful that you could use in uh, your next project for, for home improvement. Uh, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, what I did was I prepared a, a short screencast for you guys where I made a diagram to look at the uh, way that these, these switches work a little bit more in depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jump into that and then we're going to come back here to the board and we're going to check it out in real life. So let's do that. Okay, let's get started here. Uh, what I have is a, a diagram showing a switch loop with two three-way switches and one four-way switch in the middle. The four-way switch is designed to operate with your three-way switches. And you can have as many four-way switches as you want in the switch loop. And keeping that in mind, you can pretty much control the light from an infinite number of locations. Uh, in the video tutorial on three-way switches I got very in-depth with the way that the contact positions work in each switch uh, to try to give you guys a better understanding of what's actually going on internally with each switch and I will do the same in this particular tutorial so that if you didn't look at the first one you'll get the same understanding that I tried to, to get across in the first tutorial and if you did look at the first one you'll get a really quick refresher so let's just go ahead and jump right in uh, what you want to do is visualize this as three different boxes that contain switches the first box contains a three-way switch which I aptly named three-way switch one. The second box contains a, a four-way switch, which of course, four-way. <laughs> and uh, the last box contains a switch that's an the last three-way switch in the loop, which I call three-way two. Okay. Each box is gonna have two cables coming into it. Okay. The first box is gonna have the supply conductor coming in and when I say the supply conductor what I mean by that is the the cable when I said conductor when is actually a cable the cable that supplies power to your switch loop uh, that power can come from a circuit breaker panel it could come from a, a outlet somewhere in your home it can wherever it comes from the the only prerequisite is that the power is, is continuously on or uninterrupted. Uh, you don't want to run power, say, from another switch or something like that. Because in that particular situation, if you turn the switch off the supply of power, you, this particular loop would, would, would no longer operate. So when we say 110 volt supply, uh, we want that to be an uh, uninterrupted supply something that's not going to be turned off by something else unless you have some type of trouble and the circuit breaker trips and it turns the whole circuit off okay so each each box has two two cables coming in the first box has the supply cable which is a two conductor Romax uh, leaving that box and going to the box that contains the four-way switch is a three conductor Romax cable and leaving the box that has the four-way switch in it we have a second three conductor cable that uh, travels to or gets run to the last box which has a three-way switch in it and in that box we're going to have that cable that, that's coming from the box containing the four-way and we're also going to have another two conductor Romex in that box that's going up to the light and I guess we'll be able to see that a little better when we go down to our test board and, and watch the guy work. Uh, 
the white wire in each cable when it enters a box the white wire gets spliced it just splices in every box uh, you don't want to have a situation or you should never actually have a situation uh, especially in a residential uh, setting now where your white wire and the white wire is what's called the grounded conductor or your neutral you should not have a situation where your grounded conductor or your neutral conductor is connected to your switch that that's that situation should should never happen because the neutral conductor or the grounded conductor is a return path for your load in this case it's a light so the electricity flows through the black wire to the light and returns back to earth through the grounded conductor or your white white wire commonly known as the neutral so you would not see a situation where you, where you have a neutral wire connected to your switch loop there uh, I'm gonna throw a curveball and, and it's not my intention to try to confuse anyone you have you when you have a, a single pole switch loop you may see a white wire connected to uh, that switch in that particular situation the white wire is not a, a grounded conductor or neutral is actually part of the switch loop a lot of times uh, what will end up happening is they'll run the supply wire up to the box that holds the light and they'll run one cable down a two conductor cable to the actual switch in that particular situation because you just run a two wire cable down all it has is a black and a white so it's common practice and it's also accepted by by the code that inside the light box where the wire originates from that you're running to your switch box you are able to take that white wire and splice it to a energized conductor or black wire in which case the white wire coming down to the switch it's not a neutral it's actually energized and the black wire on the other side of that switch that goes back to your light becomes your switch leg or the wire that turns the light on and off but that's that's actually a a, a topic for a whole nother discussion there and, and i'm gonna try my best to try to stay on point here because that's not what this tutorial is about it's about wine three-way switches but I just want to make it really clear that you should never have a situation where you have uh, your neutral conductor or your grounded conductor connected to the, the actual switch not in a residential situation anyway I mean there there are cases where you in a ver in some control circuits and control systems where you might have a neutral conductor that goes across contacts for overloads and things like that but that's again that's a whole nother subject uh, I gave a brief description of how contact positions work in the, the video tutorial for the three-way switch uh, I'm gonna go over that really quick just so you guys can see what's happening inside the switch which you will see when we go through the 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 showing the path of the electricity but real quick here I'm gonna jump at uh, three-way switch number one imagine this black screw here being a pivot point for a contact if I was to change the position of that contact instead of it going this way it would go straight across like so so that that contact position works by pivoting on this point and moving between these two screws okay and it's the same with the other three-way switch the four-way switch is very similar but instead of it being uh, one contact you have two contacts in this particular situation uh, you can look at this being a pivot point for this particular contact and this being a pivot point for this particular contact and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the positions there really quick and as you can see this contact position moves from this screw to this screw and this contact position moves from this screw to this screw and that's how that guy works so what we'll do real quick here is we'll just uh, run through 
the path that the current takes uh, with different switch positions and how it turns the light on and off. Right now, as we're looking at this, the light is actually on. If we were to follow uh, the path of the current, which starts at a black wire from your supply here, remember I told you the white wire is a return, what you would end up seeing is this. The wire takes, I mean, I'm sorry, the current takes a path through the, f the first switch there, and it moves through this switch that way, comes through this conductor here, goes down this way, up into the light, through the light, and back through the white, back to ground. All right, now we're going to change the position of another switch, and it really doesn't matter which switch you switch position you change the the end result is going to be the same so what we'll do is we'll change uh, switch position for three-way number two now what's happening is the current is traveling through this guy this switch here and it's going up that way through the red wire but now it has nowhere to go so the lights not going to come on and we could go to any switch it doesn't matter we'll go to uh, three-way switch number one and change the position there now what we have is the current traveling through this switch that way back down and the light comes on and we could do this all day what we'll do is we'll do it one more time but this time we'll change the four-way switch position so now what we have is the current travels this way comes up straight across light is off and that's pretty much how this particular switch loop works it's, it, 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 it's complicated on the outside but once you understand what's actually going on it's actually not that bad so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our test board where I've uh, set up a, 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 a loop there with two three-way switches and a four-way and we will take a quick look at that and show how all of that looks in the real world so let's get into it all right all right now that we've got the screencast uh out of the way we can jump into the, the actual physical real world here and see see the uh switches in action uh what i did this time around is i purposely threw in a metal box in all the other screencasts that we've done together, I've used plastic boxes. And the reason I threw the, the metal box in is because when you're wiring a metal box, that box has to be grounded. I mean, I, I've, I've went into a lot of jobs that someone did and they used a metal box and they, they failed to ground the box. And that's really not good because if the box were, if one of the wires were to get skinned or for whatever situation you had, uh, a wire that was energized come into contact with the box and, it, and it's not grounded that box could become energized and it could actually carry current so if you look inside the box I have one of these screws screwed into the box this is a 1032 screw uh, this one is green in color the green color the notes that is used for for grounding purposes and I have one inside this metal box here and I have one of these bare wires connected to it so now this box is effectively grounded uh, also with this particular type of box the connector inside the box is actually designed to be used for either armored cable, MC cable or Romex if you notice <clears throat> I'm using Romex, as you can see. I cut this part of the connector out. Uh, to keep the video short, I, I did it before I started recording because I didn't want to go over my time there. But basically, all I had to do was take the connector out, clip this part out, and stick it back in. And as you can see, it, now it works perfectly fine for Romex. So it's, it's a universal type connector. All right, what else do we have? If you go back to the screencast and remember what we did there, like I told you guys, the, the wiring is pretty straightforward. Our supply or our source comes from the panel and it runs straight across here and it goes into the first box with a three-way switch. 
we have a three conductor cable that leaves that box and comes to the box that contains our four-way switch and out of that box to the last box which has our last three-way in it with a two conductor leaving that one and going up to the light uh, as you can see like I showed you on the screencast the neutrals splice through each box what you didn't see on the screencast was the grounding conductor this bare copper wire that's your ground wire or your grounding conductor not can be confused with the ground dit conductor which is the white wire or neutral like I told you guys this it actually acts as a return path for your electricity in which case that means that this wire actually carries current so it's a very dangerous wire even though it's grounded if you were to open it up you have actual current on one side, the side that's not going back and being bonded to wherever your grounding source is. So be very careful that the white wire is a current current conductor, the grounded conductor, the neutral current current, which means that it carries current and it can hurt you. Okay. Uh, I think we covered most of how everything is wired on the screencast. And the only thing that's really left to do is to see everything work. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the power source, the breaker. And like I say in every video, it's all about safety and being safe. I should have safety glasses on. And if you own a pad and you're doing home improvement around the house, any type of job, it's really, really a good idea to wear safety glasses. So, but anyways... You step away from the panel so that you're not standing in front of it. Put your hand on the breaker that you intend to turn on and you turn your head and turn it on like so. That way if anything goes wrong, you're not standing in front of the panel to, to get injured in any kind of way. So now we have everything energized and we could pick a switch, any switch, it really doesn't matter. Light should come on. Uh, just imagine that each one of these boxes are in different locations in, in your, your home and they're all controlling the one light. You can now can control them from any location, like so. And that's pretty much how the four-way switch works. It's uh, designed to be put in between the two three-ways and like I told you in the screencast, you can add as many three uh, four-way switches, I'm sorry, as many four-way switches as you want. So long as they're in they're placed in between the three ways. Uh, that that pretty much concludes this tutorial. And like always, if you guys have any questions or you have any concerns that you need addressed, uh, on Electricians Hangout site, there's a section for leaving comments. And you leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. So remember, be safe, wear your safety glasses, never turn a circuit on while you're standing directly in front of the panel. And that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys the next time. Bye-bye.